Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video for you today on one question to stop asking yourself when you're shopping and give you six alternatives of better questions to help you spend more intentionally when you are shopping. So the question that you should stop asking yourself is, do I want this? Now the problem with this question is that it is binary and it doesn't take into account the value of the item in a very deep way. So, you know, you're going to say, do I want this item? Yes or no. Uh, if you're like me, you like buying things that that the answer to that question would very commonly be yes. Instead of asking a binary question like, do I want this, yes or no, here are six alternatives. Do I want this more than the other items on my purchase procrastination list? Now, I've talked before about keeping a list of things that you want. I think the act of writing things down helps to like honor the intention of the thing that you want in the moment. And then you can set a certain amount of time before you decide, okay, um, after this amount of time, I'll go back and purchase it if I still want it. Um, this gives you time to find alternatives to things. Um, it also gives you a little cooling off period for like emotions. So that way um, you can often decide that you maybe don't want it as much as you thought you did. Um, and then if you really did want it and you still want it at the end of the like cooling off period, whether it's 72 hours or I like to do the following month. So if I still want it when the following month comes around, then I can actually include it on my budget. So that just helps with um, better budgeting both in the month that you're currently in and the future month. So this is a great question to ask, you know, to look at your purchase procrastination list and decide, do you really want the thing you're considering more than these items? A lot of the times, you know, these are maybe the bigger items that we want to save up for. So remembering those big important things that we want to save for can often help us to say no to like the impulse purchases, the low value things that we see when shopping that may not be the thing that we really want the most. Question number two, and this question is very popular in like the finance community. I hear people say this quite a bit. How many hours would I need to work to buy this? Divide the price of the item by your hourly wage. That'll tell you how many hours you'd have to work to get it. Um, I do like to try to account for taxes in that as well, because if you're in a 13% tax bracket, then you know, you'd have to work 13% more than the actual cost per hour. So anyway, this forces us to look at our time and how valuable our time is, and then compare the item against our time. So a lot of people this question works for. It's not one that I've used much, um, but it is one that my husband really likes. And like I said, a bunch of people in the finance community love that question. Questions number three and four, they're kind of related, so I'm just gonna group them together here. Can I find an alternative that doesn't require spending money? And then the next one, how could I get this for less money? For a while now, I've had a policy where I try not to pay full price for anything always looking for, for, for basically any purchase, you can find some app that has cash back for that store, some kind of coupon, you can wait for the item to go on sale before you buy it. Um, I think that this is a good question for just slowing down the thinking process a little bit instead of that quick instant impulse purchase and just thinking through it a little more, thinking through the purchase a little more. One example of this was um, our pizza cutter. I had pizza cutter on my purchase procrastination list because we had a crappy old one that like would wobble when you rolled it and just didn't really cut very well. So I had pizza cutter on my list. It had just been sitting on there for a while because I was like, I don't really need a pizza cutter. We have one that does work. But then I found an alternative that didn't cost us any money. I found out that you can use kitchen shears to cut the pizza. Uh, so just going right across it. Um, and then you can always use a knife too. So how could I get this for less money and how could I get this without spending any money? Just really good questions for thinking through the purchase. Okay, better question number five, is it on the budget? If it is on the budget, that's a very easy yes. If it's not on the budget, then see the other questions. Okay, and then the last one, number six, is a bonus question that I got from Mr. Finance Rocks. He said that he often asks himself, what if I buy this and then hate it? And I just thought that that was 
kind of funny, kind of like using pessimism to help you save money, doing a, a secondary check of like thinking through whether or not you really like it will want it. Oh, okay, I just thought of one more. Okay, bonus question seven would be where in my house am I going to store this? So I've been really exploring lately the idea of alternative restrictions. So when we started loosening up our budget and relaxing spending after we had paid off debt, um, I was like, great, we're gonna eat out more. And then we started eating out more and felt worse from eating unhealthy food more often and started gaining some weight. Even though the money restriction um, had loosened, I found that there was this other restriction of health um, that now became kind of the boundary that became the reason why we would do or not do something. Whether or not it's going to fit in your house, if you have the storage room for it, is a great question to ask because it's just thinking about like my house and the organization of things and having to have a home for everything. Thinking about that in the store um, has been a good question that has helped me kind of think through those purchases as far as you know, is this really going to fit in my life? Not just, you know, do I have the money for it now or do I want it? Yes or no. But from a practical standpoint, where am I going to put this in my house? Where am I going to store it? When you're shopping, it really is a negotiation with yourself on whether or not you're going to buy something. And this mental battle is important to win if you are going to have discipline in your finances and be able to hit your money goals. If you're gonna be able to pay off debt, save your emergency funds, save for retirement, save for your kids, you know, whatever you're working towards, that requires some level of trade-off. And I think it's important to just acknowledge that every purchase decision that we make is a trade-off. It saying yes to one thing means saying no to something else. And that's just the nature of money and time. They're just not unlimited resources. So instead of saying, do I want this, yes or no, I hope these questions help you to convince yourself to think through things a little further. And you know, you might end up still deciding to buy it, that's fine. But I think these questions are really helpful for just spending money with intention and being able to win that mental battle with yourself more often. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if it was, please thumbs up this video, and I would love to hear in the comments if you use any of these or if you have other questions that you ask yourself when you're shopping. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! If you're like, hey, Roxanne seems extra gussied up today, I am. I just got back from a photo shoot with my friend Courtney for images for the blog. Anyway, maybe I'll include a photo here for uh, kind of a sneak peek. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye! Thank you.